Sit down. So, yeah, thank you. Um, the craft work had one approach. What was the approach? The approach? Yeah. It's very hard to say in one word, but uh, the, the approach of a concept in art is tell the world uh, your view of the world. And this in a way which gets recognized. And in order of that, it has to be distinctive from the rest. And uh, we try to come up with our view of the world um, in the 70s and 80s and uh, still going on, rather still going on with it. Like this machine-like image, there was a lot of humor involved with it. I think working with machines is, it's a very nurturing process because they are sick all the time and you have to take care of them. And also machines are far from being perfect and they, uh, they keep on breaking so a lot of time, all, all the time, everybody speaks about the perfection of machines, but the truth is that they never work. <laughs> and, and you have to be very careful to make it work. And if they work, they come up with strange figures and with strange music, and you have to capture the moment. I'm talking about analog machines and not computers. The story with computers is different. Now you're working as a lecturer. Yeah. What will people learn studying at your university? Well, about the past in the beginning. So I do, with every new year, the first uh, lesson I give, we go to the Philharmonic Orchestra of Berlin and we watch a rehearsing, a rehearsal. So the last time I was there, Sir Simon Rattle was rehearsing, uh, what, what did he play? A Beethoven, Beethoven uh, number nine. So the big symphony. And it was really interesting. And later on we got together, all the students, and we were discussing about Beethoven and the articulation of time, of course. <laughs> and then in the end, finally, I made the connection to, from the score, to the, the surface of a computer software. So it's all about the construction of time, the articulation of time, and how it has changed over the centuries. It's really interesting. Well, I always start with the uh, uh, so-called traditional sound, which is in our culture the symphonic orchestra. Mm. But m your main focus is electronic music still. Yeah, we, we do. I teach a lot about the uh, uh, conversion of image and sound. Mm. So, uh, like sound design in movies and how, how the reception of any image will change uh, or depends on what music you are put underneath it or you hear at the same time. In other words, the meaning of a picture will change to the sound which you hear at the same time. Can you give us an insight in the way Kraftwerk used humor in the way of finding inspiration? We just were funny people. <laughs> and, and one secret of humor is you don't have respect so much for anything. And you kill your heroes and you make fun about your teachers. And it's, I mean, it's the same in school. At least you, you take it very serious, of course, and because you have to get through the examination and you have to learn something without learning no future and so on. But it's much easier to learn something while you develop a certain, sound, a certain style of humor, isn't it? Absolutely. So, so in a way, you, uh, you prefer the students that don't really respect you? Um, it's a good question in that context. Um, they have to respect what I say in terms of uh, that, that they don't question too much in the beginning. But later on, it's much nicer if we have 
a working atmosphere instead of they listen what I say. You know what I mean? So it's much nicer if they, if they make a joke and I laugh and I make a joke and they laugh and we develop something together as if they would just listen what I say and um, they have too much respect in saying something against it. 